Hi everyone, myself Yash Holkar and my topic of presentation today is the hash values and hashing. So what will we be learning today? So the topics uh, we will be focusing on today is what is hashing, what are hash functions and hash values. What are some characteristics of hash values that uh, differentiate them from the encryption and decryption methods? What are some problems associated like hash collisions and how to uh, resolve them? What are digital signatures and how hash values are used in digital signatures? What are some uses of hashing and hash values and some example for better understanding? So we will begin with understanding what is hashing and hash functions. So as we know, hashing is a process of transforming any given key or a string of characters into another value. Basically, uh, what we are doing in hashing is we are giving a specific input message to a specific uh, algorithm which transfers the message into some sort of uh, value which would be different from the original value but represents uh, the original input message. This uh, changed value is basically a shorter fixed length value or what we call as the key that represents the original input string and it makes it easier to find the original string. That is, uh, whenever we use the hash value, we would find the original input method easily using a hash function. So, as we know that uh, hashing ensures data integrity. Uh, I would be explaining how does hashing ensure data integrity into further slides. Okay, what is hash function? Hash function is a function. Same input will always give out the same output if uh, passed on from the same hash function. That would be fixed size output. Obviously, hashes have this uh, specific characteristics as varied from encryption and decryption methods. That is, uh, they always have a fixed size output. No matter the length or size of the input data, 
uh, hashes would be of specific size and they can't vary uh, or change from that specific size next point would be obviously hashes should be hidden it should be very very difficult to guess the original input data from the hash values that is the algorithm is so difficult or the function is so difficult that it would be very very difficult to reverse engineer the input data and find out the original data point would be uh, they are hexadecimal values that is ranging from a to f and 0 to 9 they are specified into that limit next point would be that the values are usually used to index a fixed size table called as hash table that is these values of hashing uh, these hash values are stored into a hash table which is further used as a data um, data storage system where all the hashes along with their index values are stored and the uh, last and very very important characteristic of hash values is that they are unidirectional or that is they cannot be converted to plain text back that is uh, the hashed values or the hashed uh, input data cannot be converted into input data into the original form as hash values are unidirectional and not bidirectional so uh, we would like to focus on some problems related to hashing one of those problems would be hash collisions so what are hash collisions uh, as I explained earlier, uh, accordingly, the definition of hash collision would be a collision occurs when one when more than one value to be hashed uh, by a particular hash function hashed to the same slot in the table or data structure being generated by the hash function. That is, uh, two different varied uh, input data would give out the same hash value. Uh, it would be very very easier if I would explain it with a specific example. So uh, let's take an example. There are certain numbers to be hashed. These numbers would be 22, 9, 14, 17 and 42. As we know these are the input data. These are the numbers which are to be hashed and then these numbers are to be fed into uh, a hash table uh, or these uh, the index values which we get from uh, these numbers are to be fed into the hash table so as we see um, there is certain hash function which is to be used to generate the hashed values or indices of these keys or these numbers to be input into the hash table so the function to be used here is the value hashed mod of 10 value to be hashed mod of 10 that would be the formula we will be using here so as we know uh, we would be using uh, this formula or this function so the first number to be hashed is 22 uh, now first we will put into the function the function would use the formula that is 22 mod 10 and it would result and give us answer as 2 so this 22 number would be fed into the second position of the hash table similarly occurs with 9 9 mod 10 the hash function and the 9 would be fed into the ninth position of the table similarly with 14 into the fourth position 17 into the seventh position now uh, coming on to the fifth number that is 42 uh, when we do 42 mod 10 that is pass it through the hash function we also get the 42 uh, index to be placed into the second position now as we know 22 is already present in the second position of the hash table so here 22 and 42 both of the numbers are different varying input values but they both have a similar hashed output this is also termed as hash collisions that is two different individual values two different individual input values would have the same hashed output that is two now as before the hash table would not be able to accommodate two numbers into the same uh, into the same spot so to avoid this uh, hash collision certain measures are taken by hash algorithms or uh, hash functions so one of those methods is linear program that basically that if 42 is uh, also getting the indice as a second position then the 42 is to be placed into the sec next empty position into the hash table that is if the third position is vacant then 42 would be placed into the third position so this is called as linear probing that is uh, it is a brute force method going one by one 
checking if there are some vacant empty spaces into the hash table and the value would be placed uh, to the nearest vacant position uh, linearly. This is called as linear probing. Similarly, it's done with quadratic probing. Uh, and these are some methods which can be used to avoid hash collisions and which are primarily used by hash functions like SHJ and MD5 uh, to avoid collisions. So, uh, what are digital signatures? Uh, digital signatures and how hashes are used in digital signatures. So, take for an instance the there are some documents or data which is to be signed digitally so we have to verify if the data which we receive or the signature which has been done is uh, authentic or not so uh, how would we do that primarily the whatever data which has to be firstly checked if it is uh, changed or not first that data has to be hashed using a hashed algorithm and then uh, this hashed value is used to encrypt uh, and this hashed value is encrypted using a private key encryption. So this specific digitally signed document is firstly hashed and this hash value is uh, encrypted by a private key. So we get a specified uh, encrypted document digitally signed document or digital signed signature. Now whenever this signature is further used or any kind of other signature is used uh, we have to verify if this signature is original or not so to verify if this signature is original or not we have to check if the original uh, digitally signed signature or document is similar uh, is similar to the newer digitally signed document by checking its hash values and by decrypting it using a public key uh, decryption if both of the hash values are similar, then we would come to a conclusion that the digital signature is verified and digital signature is original. And if both of the hash values of the uh, uh, digital file are different, then we would come to a conclusion that the digital signatures are forced, that is not real, or the digital signature has been changed to a certain extent. Similarly, uh, now we would come to what are some hash functions which are primarily used and uh, some popular hash functions. As we can see here, some uh, popular hash functions would be SHA, Secure Hashing Algorithm, Message Digest 5, Murmur Hash, CRC, Cyclic Redundancy Check, and Blake 2. So these are some popular hash functions which are used uh, by several agencies and uh, popular and and locations to identify uh, and create hash values. So the first one would be SHA that is secure hashing algorithm. So SHA is a family of cryptographic hash function designed by the NSA. So NSA of the United States has designed this cryptographic hash function called as secure hashing algorithm. It was uh, firstly made in United States and it is most widely used. Uh, so as I termed it as a family of uh, cryptographic hash functions, SHA uh, is a family of SHA1, SHA2 and SHA3 and these SHA1, SHA2 and SHA3 have developed over time with, uh, with increasing increased security and complexity into their function. SHA1 is a 160-bit hash function. Uh, it was used for digital signatures and other applications. Now it is not used because it has some sort of vulnerabilities and a large number of collisions occurring into the hashed, uh, hash tables. Similarly, the next version of SHA1 was SHA2. It is a family of hash functions which includes SHA2, 24, 256, 384 and 512. Uh, so this 224, 256, 384 and 512 indicate uh, that these are the size bits into which the SHA functions would or uh, SHA functions would occur uh, of uh, 224 bits, 256 bits, and so on. SHA is widely used in security protocols, SSLs, and TLS, and obviously considered secure because it is obviously secure than SHA one. SHA three is the latest member of SHA family uh, derived derived by NSA uh, in the United States. And it was also selected as the winner of the best hash function competition of NIST hash functions in 2012. 
it is faster and more secure than SHA2 and produces hash values of uh, similar bits as of SHA2 that is 224, 256, 384 and 512, 512 bits. Another uh, popular hashing algorithm of function would be MD5 or message digest 5. It is a widely used cryptographic hash function and it on, only has 128 bit hash value that is 128 bit hash function uh, hash bits that so it is fast and efficient but is no longer used for security purposes because it had some vulnerabilities it had some uh, problems that is bitwise operations and it had some arithmetic problems and logical functions resulting into several collisions uh, the obviously the basic idea behind md5 was to take any length of input message and convert it to a specified length hashed output uh, but that doesn't mean that MD5 doesn't isn't used in a variety kind of applications today. Although it is not used for uh, it, although it is not recommended for security purposes, but it's still used for variety of applications, including digital signatures, password storage, and data integrity checks. In some locations and some agencies use it. However, it has some weaknesses which have some vulnerabilities. Uh, it has a collision attack vulnerability, which is a huge problem into the security of the passwords used to hash so similarly huh, now we will be moving on to what are the uses of hash values into different domains and how does hash values help in day-to-day -day life so if we talk about digital forensics in forensic analysis community uh, if a forensic image set is sent to another examiner, if I provide a copy of forensic image set to another examiner, I also provide the hash value associated with it because the other examiner would get the forensic image, the image file and would check that the hash value provided by me is similar to the hash value received, uh, similar to the hash value received by the forensic image by him. Now, if both of these hash values do not match, then it would mean that something is different. That is the forensic image has been uh, compromised somewhere or the data has been compromised somewhere or there is some problem because uh, the hash values change drastically with a very small change even into the input data, a very small change into the input data, the hash values change drastically. We also term this effect as avalanche effect and uh, very popular uh, popular functions like md5 and sha have this avalanche effect uh, to them as they change very rapidly even if a small amount of data is changed into the um, input data in forensic analysis uh, this is the way uh, we check hash values of the forensic images sent that is to verify that is for the data integrity purposes we use forensic uh, uh, digital forensics in this aspect uh, in the security and cryptographic community obviously a system does not store our passwords uh, we know that the system always uses a computed hash value of our password if someone is trying to break into your account it is exceedingly complex for someone to come up with a password that results into the same hash value as your original password it is very very difficult as the security systems have a specific hash value associated with your password of your system. Now, any kind of hacker or a perpetrator if uh, is trying to break onto your password and trying to uh, generate a password of the similar hash value, it is very, very, very difficult to generate a password with similar kind of hash value because hash values are matched in password, uh, password comparison into the security and cryptographic community. It is basically uh, in simpler terms, is that uh, you cannot reverse engineer the hashed values uh, from a given password. Uh, also, uh, there are some some hash algorithms are more secure than others. Obviously, MD5 has been cracked. That is, MD5 has to be found with several vulnerabilities and not and whatnot. Similarly, SHA uh, SHA3 specifically do not have certain kind of uh, so certain kind of vulnerabilities but it is still uh, occurring with some kind of collisions that is it is very difficult with increasing amount of uh, input data 
the collisions would obviously occur so hash collisions occur uh, if the data increases so hash algorithms should be chosen accordingly uh, according to the input data and what kind of data are to be used or to be stored another common uses of hash values in forensics and law enforcement communities and in in obviously child pornography or pornographic cases so law enforcement enforcement maintains a database of hash values of known uh, child pornography if there are certain kind of child pornography data which uh, is to be stored so uh, law enforcement maintains hash values of these known child pornography data now uh, this child pornography data hash values are to be shared with uh, the law and for enforcement communities uh, along with the uh, along with the contraband material now primarily an examiner can use tools to search seized evidence for files that have matching hash values now if an examiner gets data uh, gets some child pornography data and has to check if this child pornography data is into the database of law enforcement then he on, always checks the hash values of those uh, of those contraband material if those match that would save them a huge amount of tedious and time consuming process of reviewing what could be millions of pictures and computers uh, or millions of pictures or videos on a computer and searching for contraband material it is obviously not a perfect solution uh, it can miss contraband items it can miss child pornography videos or photos but it is uh, it does save a lot of time similarly uh, also hashing is used to remove duplicate files e discovery software scans the hash values and uh, specifically used in uh, email messages so unless deleted both the sender and recipient in uh, email messages have a copy of the email so rather than review the same message twice the software identifies the file as having a duplicate but presents only one copy for review and deletes uh, the duplicate files when deleted by both of the parties also uh, to confirm the authenticity of esi as i explained earlier used in digital and computer forensics to ensure data integrity uh, that the data has not been tampered as even a slight modification to the file changes its hash value if a forensic examiner is examining a specific type of data and he shared the data to some another kind another examiner then the hash values of both of the data shared should be similar that is then that would uh, that would ensure the examiner that the data has not been tampered with in between the uh, in between in between transport of the data so uh, i would like to give an example uh, to ensure that it is easier to understand how hash values function so for example let's say we have two files and want to determine if either has been altered we have two files we have uh, their hash values and we have to check if uh, both of them has been altered or not to do this we use digital forensic software to compare the hash values against the values of the original file so we have a uh, hash values of the original file and we have two files and we have to check if those two files are altered or not so first uh, we have to check what are the hash values for the original file so the information uh, as you can see in the pictures below the information squared in the red is the hash values of the original file so we calculated the hash values of the original file of the icloud backup and you can see the md5 and sha1 hash values of the file now uh these values uh, as you can see here these values uh, uh we would compare these hash values with to the other two files along with the original we would match both of them and check if these hash values match or not so as we can see document 1 uh, has a varied kind of hash value from its original value as you can see the hash value is different from the original document and document 2 the hash values in the yellow squared boxes are similar uh, of the document 2 that to that the original that would mean that sample document 1 is actually altered from the original file and sample document 2 is original that is it has not been altered because the hash values of the document 1 is 
not matching with the original, but document two is matching with the original. That would mean that document one has been altered in between the transportation and document two has not been altered and is completely similar to the original file. So thank you so much for your time. Uh, please uh, let me know if there are certain kind of questions. I would love to explain and answer these questions. Thank you so much.